boy, the 7700 XT really launched in a weird spot, didn't it? 12 gigabytes. It launched at the same time as the 7800 XT, and that stole the show. But the 7700 XT, especially the Steel Legend, it's definitely something worth talking about. Let's take a look. So this is the Steel Legend variant from ASRock. 12 gigabytes, triple fan design, three DisplayPort 2.1, one HDMI 2.1, it's actually pretty good. Wait, it's actually pretty good, then what's the problem? Well, you've got the 7600, the 7700 XT, and the 7800 XT. Eight, 12, 16 gigabytes of VRAM. This really is a game of VRAM configurations, but it also has to do with cores and clocks that are available on your GPU, plus also overclockability sprinkled in. The performance of the 7700 XT is close-ish to the 7800 XT. It's closer to the 7800 XT than it is the 7600 XT. But pricing, pricing is sort of where things get a little weird. The pricing of the 7700 XT at launch has been pretty close to the 7800 XT. And the 7800 XT is a much better card, 16 gigabytes of VRAM and better performance. And so if we're talking about a 50 or $75 difference, it makes more sense to move up to the more expensive card. You're gonna get a lot more lifetime out of it. I think, you know, uh, if market forces weren't a thing, AMD might be targeting $225, $300, $425 with these three cards, you know, something in that range, but the market hasn't really worked out that way, which is unfortunate, but maybe by the time you're watching this video, the pricing will have adjusted. See, it's not just the, the RDNA three cards. We're talking about the RDNA three family, but none of that really exists in a vacuum. There's also RDNA two. AMD's kind of competing with itself because RDNA two cards were also very good, but RDNA three is that much more awesome, especially when we're talking about uh, ray tracing. They've improved ray tracing, but ray tracing in general, I think is reserved only for the highest tier cards. And I think that's true with AMD or Nvidia. So mm, we'll take a look. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, why isn't, why isn't, why isn't he talking about any Nvidia cards in the competitive landscape here? So, well, if we're just talking about pricing, Nvidia cards are still priced at a significant premium. Take ray tracing out of your mind for a second. We'll add it back in a minute. But if you take ray tracing out of your mind for a second, AMD's got the goods on driver stability, game performance, day zero game support, making the driver GUI uh, very easy and very polished, and driver reliability and stability. Generally, hardware issues with cards notwithstanding, because we see more of that kind of thing on the level one forums from both teams then we really do uh, software glitches and software problems. Finally, AMD has a world-class team that has been consistently knocking this out since the RDNA 2 generation, and now we're on RDNA 3. Hopefully, they keep up more of uh, been there, done that. So the performance and the driver considerations and everything else, basically at parity. Add back in ray tracing. Generally, NVIDIA is doing a little bit better with ray tracing. Generally, NVIDIA is doing a little bit better with frame generation technologies, but for a reviewer, frame generation technology is really tough because the video card's not really rendering the frame. So NVIDIA wants to sell you less video card with some software magic that makes up for the fact that you have less video card to start with. AMD's really hot on their heels, but this is sort of a new approach. If AMD had been the first to do this, the spin would have been uh, decidedly negative, I think. And it's already as a, you know, from my standpoint, any kind of frame generation technologies, that's a nice thing that you can do to smooth things out, but that's not really something you should be doing to get to 60 FPS. If we're talking about going from 70 to 90 FPS to 120 to 144 FPS frame generation, okay, maybe. If we're talking, talking about frame generation technology to get you from 35, 40 FPS to like 60 FPS, I look on that a little less favorably. Let's break down the benchmarks for our Steel Legend 7700 XT. As always, I like to start with older games. Borderlands 3 1080p Ultra Preset. 
Okay, this is pretty cool. Things have changed a little bit since the launch, but not tremendously. The 7700 XT is holding its own against the 4070 reference for sure. I mean, we've definitely got better 1% lows and 0.1% lows in this title. 162 FPS average, pretty darn good. You can see the 7800 XT reference edition coming in at 181, but still, this is pretty close. You know, if you've got a 144 hertz monitor, you're gonna have a very enjoyable experience here. And there's really not a lot of difference between 1440p and 1080p. We still manage 116 FPS average. I like to use the Callisto protocol for this kind of testing as well, especially for doing hotspot testing and, and that sort of stuff. And here we see 190 FPS average versus 208 versus 213 as we sort of step up in, in products. Our 1% and our 0.1% lows Never very super awesome in the Callisto protocol at 1080p with the ultra preset. You can dial the preset down and recover <laughs> some of the uh, squirreliness from your 1% and your 0.1% lows, but overall this isn't a bad result for this game. At 1440p, it's much the same story, but still, 154 FPS is going to be a very enjoyable experience on this GPU. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p high, 222 FPS. And a 1440p, 151 FPS. Again, this card basically slays for any 1080p and 1440p combination. I like to also test Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield because those are kind of hot right now. Subjectively, you know, there's not a built-in benchmark or anything like that for either one of those games. And Baldur's Gate 3 gets a little weird when you've been playing it for two, three hours at a time. That's just something with the game. But overall, it's a very enjoyable gameplay experience with this GPU in either game at 1440p. Noise and thermals, that's why you're buying this card, right? Noise and thermals. The 7800 XT and the 7700 XT have quite toasty junction temperatures when they're uh, at their maximum. The 7700 XT Steel Legend, however, has a much lower junction temperature as reported from, you know, torture testing the Callisto Protocol benchmark and then looking in Hardware Info 64 to see what our maximum hotspot is. The GPU is audible, is much more quiet even than the 7800 XT. In case you're thinking the 7600 XT might be at an advantage in terms of noise and thermals, it's not because it's physically smaller, but the engineering here that ASRock has done uh, is, is really pretty good for a GPU of this class to be able to manage the thermals as well as it does. It also gives you a little bit more overclocking headroom effectively when you're dealing with this kind of thermals and you're, you're able to keep it under 80 degrees C for the most part. You can just turn on rage mode on your GPU. It's one click and then you've got an overclocked GPU and then you can enjoy better performance. Keep in mind that the performance in rage mode or with an overclock, that is an overclock and that is going to vary from GPU to GPU, like the physical GPU. So you might get a Steel Legend 7700 XT and it won't perform quite as well as this one, but you know, be aware that that is a thing that you can do and it's one click and potentially it's pretty awesome. So there you have it. The fit and finish, the build of this card is pretty significant. It is a longer card, so I can see this being a little problematic in OEM systems. They also recommend a 750 watt power supply. Most OEM systems are not going to have that. So probably you're going to have put together a machine around this GPU if you're building something for this GPU. That said, this is a reasonable GPU. 1080p and 1440p, AAA titles, high settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you know, the older AAA title at a bajillion FPS to Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield, the current new hotness, it plays really well. So you'd be hard pressed to go wrong. Really the thing that you have to consider when you're looking at this card is to look really closely at other cards in similar price points. Can you get a 6950 on the secondary market or you know, uh, old stock or something like that for a similar price. If you can, even though it's already in A2, that would make more sense. If the price differential between the 7700 XT and the 7800 XT isn't significant, then you probably should move up to a 7800 XT. If you can get a really high-end NVIDIA card, not bloody likely, then maybe that's worth considering. But AMD is the leader at the price, performance, low headache, uh, you know, <laughs> triangle of uh, insight and wisdom in, in this in this generation, in this world that we find ourselves in, in, in the uh, sort of toward the end of 2023. And that position in the market is very hard earned. 
in general, it would be amazing if we saw better prices for GPUs because I can remember, you know, like the $300 GPU was the upper middle of the road, upper high end GPU for a long time there. And now whew, prices have shot up dramatically, but everything is that way. So unfortunate. So I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the Steel Legend RX 7700 XT and its strongest selling point, noise, thermals, maybe a little bit overclocked performance. That Hyper RX feature is definitely something you should look into for AMD's platform. Hyper RX makes your life a lot easier. You just sort of turn it on for your games, you get better performance. It makes benchmarking and you know, you know uh, apples to apples comparison a little more challenging, but hey, Good job, AMD. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.